thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, my name is Phil Molina. Uh, I, I kind of like started this thing, uh, and I'm really excited to to get to see where it's gotten at this point. Uh, it's just so amazing to have you guys here. I could not have done it without the help of Eric Voss. Hey, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, my friend Sam Basher. Hello. And then uh, you might know him from Smosh and Smosh related items, Matt Ross. Uh, Matt is one of the biggest Marvel fans I know. Uh, yeah. Super excited to have him here. Yeah. Uh, but also, thank you guys so much for being yes. here. You guys are badasses. Round of applause for yourselves. <laughs> I said round of applause. No woos, man. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, cool. All right. Thank you so much to the El Capitan for hosting our screening. Let's give it up for them. Yes. Yeah. El Capitan, my Capitan. Yeah. Beautiful theater. Amazing experience. You guys all got to see that. That's uh, my favorite way to watch it. All right. Uh, real quick before we get started, I just got to plug our new podcast. It's called Inside Marvel. Uh, make sure to subscribe to that if you want any of our theories, the breakdowns that we do, also maybe a potential new upcoming Marvel-related show. All of that comes out first on the podcast. And then finally, about podcasts, we cannot have done all these podcastings that we're doing or this event without Himalaya Media. Himalaya Ooh. has been helping us out a lot. Thank you to Himalaya. Yeah. So Himalaya has been helping out in the rocks just for a while since we launched our first uh, podcast earlier this year. And then in June, we're going to launch something. I, I know what it is, but I'm not allowed to say it, apparently. It says something really special. So yeah. June, it's a baby. Oh, <laughs> launched! <whoa. laughs> uh, great. <laughs> All right, uh, but uh, what that, uh, well, this part actually I can tell you about. Uh, New Rockstars Plus is going to be a premium podcast subscription on Himalaya's platform that's going to include completely ad-free versions of everything you guys find now on the New Rockstars podcast, plus some podcasts and shows that we're making exclusively only for premium subscribers. Uh, if you guys want more information about that, we are probably going to have a link in the description or something. Uh, I'm looking at the one person that knows, and he was drinking <laughs> in that moment. Uh, but guys, what do you guys think of Avengers Endgame? <laughs> A complex wave of emotion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tears splashing. Uh, on the yeah, ground. one person just bled from the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Really. yeah. All right. We just all got out of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, before I ask for official first reactions, I want to know first emotional reaction that you had walking out. Show it to me. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> ah. Right. Oh. Super confusing way to feel about this whole thing. Uh, uh, Eric, what do you what do you think? Just coming out of it, just like emotionally, what, what was your reaction? So much movie! Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that Marvel did it this way because I would watch eight hours of Marvel uh, if I could. And <laughs> Disney Plus, I will be able to soon. <laughs> but I don't want any other studio to copy this model because I think Marvel is the one uh, group of geniuses who figured out how to pull this off. Over 11 years of films, 22, 23 now films? Yeah, Looking over right. 23, they made this climactic ending that connected back to the previous films in so many interesting ways. Spoiler warning, by the way. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you haven't watched Avengers Endgame, uh, uh, it's too late. Yeah, it's what hilarious. were you doing? It's Why did you not watch you're Avengers done. Endgame? Biggest yeah. movie in the world. You're going to get spoiled. Yeah, I think in, in any third act or any finale, you want it to call back and connect to everything that we've seen before. So that pretty much is just made up of callbacks and recycled, but in a good way, surprising uh, bits of dialogue that pays off things that we saw earlier. And I feel like the entire Endgame film was that. It felt like a fireworks finale, you know, after the boring 45 minutes of fireworks. <laughs> no, this felt like a, a good conclusion, both emotional, uh, emotionally speaking, and like, just thrill ride. Speaking. Yeah, Sam, Matt, what'd you guys think? Uh, this, I gotta say, I'm lucky enough to be able to see this twice and t cried both times, screamed both times. It was like a roller coaster, but I was sitting still, so that was definitely not fun for anyone around me. I, <laughs> you still I, puked everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crying so, uh, but genuinely cried so much and didn't drink any water beforehand that I felt dehydrated oh. after. But <laughs> it's good. It's all good because this was something that uh, hasn't been pulled off before. It's something special for everybody here, everyone around the world that has invested their time and money and energy into these movies and TV shows and properties, um, they they didn't just like pull it off. They did that plus a thousand, plus three thousand. No. Oh, oh no, we're sad. Yeah. Oh. You know, they, I, I, it, and it's crazy because like you guys like 
predicted a good amount of stuff, but that didn't change the fact that this was still a surprise, a thrill ride, and the journey to get to where, it, like, the endings that you predicted uh, was still a treasure, and I can't wait to watch it 30 more times in theaters. Please come with me when I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's exhausting. I mean, yeah. Rollercoaster's 100% right. Like, I went in, luckily, I went social media blackout yeah. for three days beforehand. I was like, too many spoilers. Reddit, Twitter, everything's got spoilers. I went in completely blind. I saw the first trailer. And I was on that ride with every peak and every bell, and it was insane. I was physically exhausted afterwards. Not too much, because I went home, had dinner, came back and saw it again. <laughs> so I did two in a row, and it was a lot. But it was just, it's a lot. It's so much movie, like yeah. you said, it really is. And there's no real boring parts. Like, there's everything. They yeah. even made me care about Thor 2. <laughs> yeah. No one can do that except this movie. <laughs> Miracles can happen. Yeah, yeah I, I felt that same thing about uh, this concept of it felt like more than a movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've only had that a few times like in the in my life as a, as a film goer. Whether or not you liked it or, or hated it, I had that with Interstellar. Where I was like, this was a class. Like a college mm -hmm. level class <laughs> on something. Uh, I had it a bit with Blade Runner 49, 2049. Uh, and then this, basically, where I don't know if you guys felt this, but especially once we hit the credits and you're seeing these things, I was like, this feels like the last movie ever made. <laughs> like, yeah. They will never make another yeah. movie after this. The boarding up the arc light yeah, and the exactly. Capitans and the AMCs. Yeah, all right, so I wanna, uh, I wanna hear now, uh, let's go, you, you guys know our, our thing. We get pretty deep in our, in our dives uh, and we're gonna get pretty analytical. So up front, we're just gonna keep it light for a moment here. I just wanna hear like, just what's your favorite moment? Just your favorite moment from the movie. Uh, honestly, the, the they were able to keep so much stuff hidden. You know, yeah. like there, it's it's so impressive that like not only like Disney fully trusts what they're gonna do, right? Doesn't matter. Like with the Marvel stamp on it, they can do whatever they want. But when it came to uh, Hulk, overall was it's my favorite use of that character, and it's mainly because of Mark Ruffalo's like his mannerisms and his comedy, but also you get just a little bit of physical comedy with him being a little bit bumbly, but also he's cool. Like I mm -hmm. I, I want more of this character. I want a Disney Plus show of this character. Please. Thank Hulk you. dabbing. Oh for yeah. Like eight episodes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just dabbing the whole time. Uh, I ugly cried at Avengers Assemble. I was just, <laughs> this is even what I wanted. Like I was just blubbering in the theater. That was my moment. That is, that is what we've been waiting for. They'd never done it, they'd never said it. It's a callback, but it's also still a reveal. It was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted, which is why I had to see it again, because I was like, I was so overwhelmed with emotion, I missed most of the battle. <laughs> I had to go back and I was like, whoa, there's like actually things happening. That's crazy. But it, that was my favorite moment, hands down. Yeah, for me, it was uh, Fat Thor, which is the true Thor in my mind. I mean, all, of the, all these years, I've thought, okay, if I really just start hitting the gym, maybe I can, I can cause <laughs> play as Chris Hemsworth. Now he's meeting me in the middle. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know what is so funny about this point is that like I, so Eric and I have known each other for, for 35 years. Yeah, at least. Uh, oh, wow. uh, something like that. No, we're both 19. Uh, but, uh, not a joke. Uh, but the moment you said that Fat Thor was your, your like favorite, I was like, of course. Like, <laughs> like because yeah. you have been compared to Chris Hemsworth yeah. if he wasn't, so, you know. I mean, I preferred Fat Pratt, Australian. and then Fat Pratt let me down when he left Parks and Rec to, <laughs> yeah. to get bulked up as Star-Lord. I was just waiting for him to bulk back out. I mean, it felt like when, uh, you know, young girls were going to see Wonder Woman, and finally they had a hero on screen. They had a hero. <laughs> <laughs> that was Fat Thor for me. Uh, uh, love it. Uh, all right, so for, uh, for me, I, I mean, guys, it's it's I am Iron Man, right? Oh, yeah, that yeah, moment, because yeah. uh, uh, that kicked off the whole dang thing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, Sixty-five years ago, when we, the first <laughs> Iron Man yes. came out, uh, uh, that that just hearing that again and it kind of meaning something else this time. But man, like, oh, I also ugly cried. I'm like trying not to actually revisit those emotions because mm -hmm. I will do it here now. <laughs> uh, but I'm actually curious what you guys thought uh, the, the kind of most epic moment was. We're gonna stick with that. So I'm gonna give you a list and then we're gonna do this one by a round of applause. You guys ready? All right, so uh, ooh, these are all so dang good. All right, when Captain America says, Hail Hydra. Yeah! yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. So cool. Uh, oh man, these are, oh, God, okay, these are all Cap. Cap finally saying, Avengers Assemble. Yeah. Yeah! yeah. 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 Good one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, Hammer goes flying through the air. Cap wields Mjolnir. Yeah. 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 Wow. Meow meow. Meow meow, meow, meow for the meow, win. Meow. Uh, uh, I thought it was a meow meow. Yeah. Avengers Assemble. Yeah. Yeah. Avengers Assemble. Yeah. 
Meow meow. Thank you for the cats, man. It's like the internet loves uh, cats. Thank you so much to uh, Meow Meow Cat Mix uh, for sponsoring this. Uh, we're, we're happy to do that. Uh, cool. All right. So it sounds like that was the most epic moment. Yeah, uh, that was pretty big. Man, that's Cat's Arthur, movie you know, in a way. We're gonna get to to protagonists and whatnot in a little bit. Um, now, all right. So now I want to go into uh, that's kind of like these like epic moments, right? What moments went like bam and hit you in the feels? Uh, when this flickered off, probably for me with Tony oh, Stark, yeah. just like it wasn't a fade, it was just like your phone dying. You yep. know, oh, <laughs> nothing sadder than your phone dying. <laughs> no, it, just, yeah, I mean, it, it felt so real. It didn't feel too cinematic or over the top. It just felt like when you do lose someone, that is kind of how it goes. And it, it, uh, it, it felt like losing a friend who we've been growing up with. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like it's there are the bigger moments, but the like the moment that really got me was when Tony accidentally discovers time travel, and he sits down and he's can't believe what he just discovered. Like yeah. this is the linchpin of saving the entire universe, and of course he curses his daughter. Here's it, <laughs> yeah. and that and she's perfect. She's such such a perfect foil yeah. for him in this movie. But that reaction of him like gasping, covering his mouth, and realizing the implications of what he just created, it's amazing. It's such a good moment. Yeah. What did it mean the feels? I mean, when Thor and his buddies get trash talked in Fortnite, just got <laughs> oh, oh god, too real, too real. Yeah, this is the most real part of the they movie. They know my plight. Yeah, time travel, no. Fortnite trash talk, one hundred percent. No, I mean it's a symbol for me, one hundred percent. It's a fact that assembled. we've been waiting so long. He didn't say it in any of the Avenger movies. They're all together for the very first time. It got me. It just got. Me. Why? Why do you think? What it just? I just it was. Phrase. I mean, I've been a comic book fan my entire life, and like the fact that we've never had this massive battle fight scene like a splash page, like a huge thing. We've never really had that. This is the first time that we're getting it and I was just overwhelmed with emotion. It was insane. It was just so, it was just it was heartwarming and, and gave me hope about cinema, gave me hope about pop culture and geek culture. It was amazing. It was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, uh, oh, man, I, like I just have to be honest with you guys. The, it is, uh, uh, at, at one point not long ago I, I lost somebody and when Pepper says, uh, it's it's okay. We're okay. We're okay. You can yeah. rest now. I had said those exact words, and yeah. I was like, "Holy crap!" Yep. That is like what this whole thing has been about. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was just so like proud of them, and mm -hmm. I was so proud of him mm -hmm. in that moment. Uh, uh, still gets me. How about biggest surprises? We did predict a lot, uh, and yet the movie felt completely yes. surprising. Uh, things that were com totally unexpected. First twenty minutes. The first 20 minutes. I mean, I have like Going three. Going to Thanos? Yeah, three top favorite moments in a movie theater. One of them is the snap at the end of Infinity War. One of them is the last Twilight movie. <laughs> Come on. Well, I mean, I've never been a Twilight fan. I don't care. But I thought we were talking only MCU and no, I got we real are. confused. <laughs> yeah, oh, we yeah. are. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, uh, no they, they went through and killed everybody. It was like a big deal. And that was a huge moment. And then this one, where the first 20 minutes of a movie, where all the marketing has been about, like, we're going to get Thanos, guys. We're going to get him. And the first 20 minutes, they, cop his, they chop his head off. I was like, what? what? You, no. almost, you almost said something else. Yeah, they <laughs> chop his damn head off. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, it was insane. It was just such a cool moment. And hearing the audible gasps at five years later, I was like, ah, what does this mean? What are we going to do? Is it just yeah. a relief group for another two and a half hours? <laughs> what is this going to be? It was insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the moment, I think my brain melted when Spider-Man is carrying an Infinity Gauntlet, riding a Pegasus mm -hmm. and Thor's hammer through a space battle against like an evil god. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you didn't um, predict that? This is cool. yeah. Yeah, I felt like I couldn't really see that one coming, honestly. Yeah. 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 That felt like truly like Patton Oswalt's like, uh, 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 filibuster speech. Yeah. 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 Spider-Man's riding the Pegasus. <laughs> yeah. He's got yeah. the Infinity Gauntlet. For me, the biggest surprise was how conclusive this movie was. Mm -hmm. Because Marvel's whole business model is, what's coming next? post credit scene. We got a second post credit scene. This yeah. had nothing. We just had, you know, if you stayed through the end of the credits, you heard a sound of Tony hammering his armor in the cave. And just to bring you back to where it all started. Oh, uh, is it I his daughter think. working on yeah, something? We gotta, we'll talk about that. We're gonna make eight <laughs> videos about that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt like this is just a goodbye, and that's okay. We can let go. We'll make like a ton of more videos in the next coming weeks about where it's going next. Enough like evidence throughout the movie of some teases to come, really. But this isn't about like turning the page. It's about closing the book. And to me, that's what was most. The end of a trade paperback. 
Mm-hmm. It's yes. the end of a trade paperback. Yeah. It's not the end. These characters aren't all going to disappear, and then we can start the next trade paperback. That's you exactly know what's interesting about that to me is that those often end and so epic, and mm-hmm. then there's like a little like side story that you get like on one issue or whatever, and that feels like Spider-Man: Far From Home is going to yeah. be that. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if you, you did you guys see that that Kim Feige said that's the end of the phase. It's the epilogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, We're going to get into later when that movie takes place. We had some questions. Yeah, it's going to be confusing. When we were talking about Infinity War, we we thought it. This is previously previously on New Rockstars. Uh, Infinity War, the protagonist of that movie is Thanos, right? Yes. Thanos has the clear goal. He's the one that has to make a sacrifice, and he's the one that achieves his goal uh, at the end. Who wasn't in this movie for you guys? Like, who do you feel had to learn or or change in some ways? Who had that like that, that clear that clear goal? Uh, Tony. I'd say yeah. I think it's Tony through and through because it kind of brings it all back around. Like when you're saying when he died, it's about him resting, and it's the fact that he can't. Mm-hmm. It's that he tried to he tried to prepare us, and it backfired bad, and that's his fault, and that's uh, the Avengers' fault. But he wasn't wrong, and mm-hmm. like and it's him coming to terms with okay, I can't do it that way, but I still can't stop how much I like how much I care and how much I'm will, how far I'm willing to go to protect the earth and that you finally can reach that ending and how far he's willing to push himself especially when it comes back to the Avengers first movie when he talks about cutting the wire or laying down on the wire right. for his fellow man mm-hmm. and it's like mm, he chose to cut the wire at the end of the day and it's or to lay down on the wire and it's I truly feel like it's his movie, but Cap's like literally right there. Right, yeah. they yeah. like really yeah. made like a hand in hand. The only reason I'm with you, um, I, I say Tony, is because of that. Uh, th- two things. The thing you were saying about him finally being able to rest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you remember the scene with um, the scene earlier with Pepper, uh, he he was told like. When he says, "Oh, maybe I just shouldn't bring it up that I solved time travel," and she's like, "You won't be able to rest if you do that." Right. And then later, he he is finally able to rest. But also, I feel like it was really telling when he went and spoke with his father, Howard Stark, and his father talks about that concept of, uh, "Can you like what, what about you putting the greater good mm-hmm. above the your needs?" Good. And it yeah. is sorry, even, <laughs> yeah, even though it is technically, um, you know, for noble reasons, his family, right? He wants to like yeah. keep his family safe. Uh, he still. Like that is still technically selfish in, in the greater terms, and so he sac- when he sacrifices himself. To, to me, it's him. I don't know if you guys feel like it's more Cap's movie. Or- I mean, I think it's the two of them. Like, I I went into this movie only watching the first trailer, and like all of our geek brains, what I do is when I see a trailer, I start to piece the movie together in my head. And that moment that they had in the trailer was like, "Do you trust me?" And he's like, "Of course I trust you." And I was like. That moment didn't feel earned. I rewatched all the movies recently, as I'm sure everybody did, and it was like, there are so many better bromances and relationships. You've got Cap and Bucky, you've got Rhodey and Tony, you've got all these characters, and I was like, if we're gonna get this like Cap and Tony relationship, I feel like it's not earned. They did it in this movie. They made me believe that the two of these guys are co-chair of the Avengers, and these guys are the founding members, and they're doing a thing, and by the end of the movie, the fact that the two of them had their essentially rest is, is it. They were the, both the, the main protagonists. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of, of Nebula. I think that she had a little bit of an arc, mm-hmm. like a little bit of a, of, a, of a journey, but beyond that, I think it was 100% the two of them, because Thor's not coming. Chris is sticking around for yeah. a while. I would say if, if it's not the two of them, this is truly the ensemble movie that I think the original Avengers was. They made uh, Thanos the protagonist out of necessity because they had so many damn so many, characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here, they you know they thinned the herd, and they were able to get back to the original crew and make kind of what was essentially like an Ocean's Eleven or Inception-style heist movie where everyone is kind of working together, though, with Cap and uh, Tony. Yeah. The- there's, then there's an argument to be made that it was the core Avengers movie, yeah, right? I Each think of so. them was given an arc and they weren't previously done. Uh, yeah. That didn't happen before. All right, I wanted to kind of brainstorm here for a second and think about something. Uh, what does it mean now? Like, let's just talk about what the world is like now. Like, now let's skip to, you know, maybe. Really, really foggy. A mm-hmm. week from now, <laughs> yeah. But like, a week after all this, like, are people that were not dusted, now they're back, and now for some of them, it's like, what do you mean you got remarried? I've been gone for five minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, as from there, from there, I'm saying, what, what are some things yeah, that we're realizing? Did it feel like five minutes? It felt like instant, and uh, Peter said, yeah. like, I kind of woke up, I wasn't yeah. as dusty anymore, and Doctor Strange showed up and dragged me into a big battle. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's odd, because I want to know how many of those kids in that high school, at the end, uh, or some of them have graduated, and now they got to go to school with the seventh graders? Right. I, I mean, mean, we're like, you mean when, when he saw Ned? Yeah, yeah. when he saw so Ned. I was wondering, yeah. is that called? College actually, and maybe like Ned is now in college. How many field it, trips did you go on in college? <laughs> well, no, I know that they go on a field trip, yeah. but also did five years pass for Ned? May, I mean, I'm gonna guess that when it comes to those cast members, like MJ, Flash, Ned, mm-hmm. Peter, they got dusted, and we move on from there and kind of like figure it's out where the we most move convenient. forward. But also, mm-hmm. like, think about like, so you own a house. 
you're gone, you come Congrats. back, who's there? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Who's in your home now? What happened to your car? What happens to your money? Is your bank still like, do you, does that oh, mean yeah. anything? What like? Depends if your bank would chase, your money might not be there. Yeah. Yeah. Going to the top of that, we're, there's no government. Half the government is gone <laughs> for five years. That could be good. What about you know, your cars? Right. Banks, anybody, like all that stuff is gone. There's half the police force is gone. Half of everybody is there gone. There are raccoons everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket's got a lot of friends. Yeah, it's it's an odd world that we didn't really see the aftermath of. I'm I'm interested to see. I mean, one of the theories maybe we'll get into this later of like what universe even the Spider-Man Far From Home could take place in. Is it in one of these alternate multiverse timelines that was set up, branched off from uh, the main timeline where you know because there's one timeline where Thanos basically ended in 2014, zipped off to the future. I guess his conquest is over, and now we're just like living in this world where no snap ever happened. Well, we have so much to break down because uh, when he talks to the ancient one, uh, she says that. If the the, the stones get out of place, then there's new branches. If they don't, remember the branch kind of like comes back. So it's almost like it's not a new branch. It is very well, weird. Because everybody puts yeah. everything back, including like Mjolnir, right? But I mean, Thanos and the entirety of his of his people are gone. They're, They're not gone. coming back. They're not Loki come... disappeared with the space stone. Yeah. He's off somewhere. <laughs> All kinds of Disney Plus adventures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I got from it was that there are going to be branches because the fact that you move back in time at all, like that, immediately makes another branch. So mm -hmm. you have to move with that. You have to you have to deal with that. But mitigating the like the offshoots when it comes to like put everything back, don't make any big changes. I think it's just there's random them offshoots now where the Hulk talked to Tilda Swinton for a little bit. Oh, ancient one. Sorry, it's going to get all confused. Yeah, she yeah. is Tilda Swinton. Yeah. The actress Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does seem like the ancient one. Mm. All right, so then specifically, is the MCU now five years in the future? They do drive a concept Audi car. I don't know if you saw that when they, they go to Tony's cabin. That's a future car. And his, right. too. Kevin yeah. Feige yeah. went in the future to 2024, got this Audi and brought it back. Yeah, exactly. yep. uh, but mm. yeah, are these movies suddenly now five years ahead of us? I think so. And I think that they, you know, if, if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Is, is staying within canon, it's I would believe that they would play with the five years. Because if there's one thing you can stretch on an ABC show for forever, it's like, loss. <laughs> like, you can definitely do. Like, oh man, it sucks. All the heroes are gone. we got to do everything for them. You know what I mean? Like, that's easy to do a season. You think a you think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. might do a at least one season without any heroes out there? And yeah, I think that, that it's just going to be them. It's so simple because they're not going to get them anyway. So it's so easy to right. be like, all right, we got to make up for it and do it ourselves. Yeah, go dusted. You're yeah, everybody yeah. got dusted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, you have like a lot of like the playground's kind of bigger now because if you do move forward, like what if the Shang Chi movie that's coming out took place in between the, the both snaps, and so he is like a necessity that was born out of a really desperate time, mm -hmm. and now it's moving forward from there. You could you can kind of play around with where movies start happening in the future, which I think is pretty cool. Mm, yeah. What about some ramifications of some of this time travel? Uh, do, does Hydra think that Cap is on their side now? Hydra's gone. Well, at least at this moment, well, for though? a couple years, they're like, they're like, hey, we, at least Hydra to me in the elevator. <laughs> I think he's, with us. he's legit. In yeah. that timeline, yeah, they're probably confused. Yeah, Robert uh, Redford's like, this, no, what, no, yeah. I didn't approve any of this. This is <laughs> my only thing is maybe that Cap, you know, after he goes back. He returns to the elevator and does the fight scene one he more time. Beats him up. <laughs> beats him all up. He's just guys, 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 I said Hail Hydra. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. I said that. So since Thanos went to the future and was killed in the future, then a lot of the events in the uh, MCU uh, happened at like since the 2012 issue, right? A lot of the movies that we saw since then were about power, the Power Stone and, and, and various Infinity Stones. Uh, do none of those happen? No, they, they, what happened happened. I think somewhere when Hulk Banner started yelling at everyone how physics works, uh, he explained how the rules uh. of this time travel work. I think I'm gonna need to rewatch that a couple times to figure out exactly what the rules are. But my takeaway from that is that what happened happened, and if changes happen, it causes new timelines to branch off. It does not ripple effect or er erase anything. It's uh, Dark World still happened. Sorry, Matt. Uh, <laughs> both of the Guardians movies still happen. Unfortunately, that Gamora is still dead. So, good yeah. question right there, right? So, what what deaths are permanent then? Is is Loki dead? Well, actually, let's do Loki on one side. Yeah. Is Black Widow dead? Yes. yes. So we said, what is Black Widow dead? You guys think Black yeah, Widow is dead? Yeah. Well, we didn't uh, see the final mission, but I mean, we'll, we don't know what Red Skull's return policy is, but she, <laughs> she might still be alive. But I, I think she's dead. Vision? 
hundred percent dead. Uh, yeah. No, he's computer <laughs> downloaded. He's fine. So there is that moment with Shuri, right, yeah. where she sees him coming. She does one last thing. It does seem like she could have downloaded him. Okay, so Loki <laughs> though is Loki out there now, messing around, having yes. adventures. Loki well, is dead last... and he's out there. Both no are happening at the same time in multiple parallel realities. Guys, oh, give me a, give me a dry erase board. I'm gonna explain this. Can you please He's, draw multiple Earths for me? I need someone to draw it out for me. Do the paper thing show. where you shove a pencil. That explains <laughs> it. That always explains it. Mobius no, strip. Yeah. No, He's I, both alive and dead. He died in the events of the first Avenger or Avengers: Infinity War. But then in this new timeline that branched off, he grabbed the Tesseract and zipped out of there. And that's what the Disney Plus series both happen. But Berkeley. like in the main storyline moving forward, he's Gonzo. He's dead. Is dead. In be. that storyline, there's gonna be an alternate timeline in which he is alive. Oh, so in this time the timeline, Tony's alive, oh, so Robert Downey Jr., maybe. 10 more movies. 10 more movies. <laughs> 10 <laughs> more movies. <laughs> what do you think, Gardy <laughs> Jang? He's actually alive there. He's scowling. It's a yeah. Um, so, uh, so you're saying in one of these alternate timelines there could be a fat Loki along with a fat Thor? Oh, I hope one so. One can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> they should all be fat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, for the, uh, we got an audience question here, and it's kind of around some of the stuff we were talking about. It's related to uh, Red Skull. Uh, Tommy, who do you got? Thanks, Philip. We're live at the El Capitan in Los <laughs> oh, Angeles. Tommy, we already know where we are, buddy. <laughs> right. we we are for me. We're so excited to be here. And what is your name? Amanda. Amanda. We have Amanda here. And what is your question? What do you think Captain America did to get back the stones um, to Vormir and Morad? Ooh. Yeah, so, so if we uh, didn't pick her up, uh, did Cap... Basically got a deal with Red Skull to get that stone back? Yeah, that's, that's my part of that question. That what would, did Cap do, yeah. That would be a really good side story, just like, you know, like uh, on the way to Thor's hammer when you got that short story. It's like, well, on the way back to deliver all the Infinity Stones and put Thor's hammer back. Like, that's interesting, because maybe he did have to talk to him. Maybe he just needed to, like, hawk it in a lake, and then he could kind of move on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, when it, it, I, there's something interesting there, but I just don't think we have enough time in any properties to deal with the Vormir story. With Morag, it's like kind of like a safe. He can kind of put it back. Or as Star-Lord's knocked out, he can kind of just, like, Put it in his hand and then get out of there. Get some smelling yeah. salts. There you go. Wake up, wake up. Okay. Wake up there you go. Because yeah. I gave him a concussion to get him out of there. Vormir, though, that's interesting. I don't know if there's quite an answer. Did, for did that Cap one. shove the ether back into Natalie Portman? Yeah, he just got it again. Wait, he, got it, he got it back as a rock, and it's supposed to be like syrup, uh, uh, like icy sludge, syrup. Yeah. Sludge, yes. yeah. And so he must have just like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When someone yeah. is like past that, yeah, like I don't know what you're supposed to do. But. You put it on your tongue. Yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, cool. Tommy, Tommy, we're good. You can let her sit down. Great Thanks question. Thanks, guys. Back question. to you. Right. Right. Same room. There's nothing in your ear. <laughs> How about the the movie then, as this cap of the Infinity Saga? What do you guys think the whole freaking saga was about? What are these these arcs? And I, I, I I'll kind of throw out there real quick. I feel like you know Iron Man and surprisingly Hawkeye. Uh, really underline this idea of finding your family, right? And um, and what you are like without your family, and what you are with it, and and kind of sacrificing yourself for your family, or, or what you become without them, and whatnot. I think there's something there. But what do you guys think? What was this? What what, what did we just spend our lives on? Friendship. It's a long time. Friendship. Friendship. I got to meet all you guys. We all yeah. became friends. Mm -hmm. The Infinity Stones were us all along. They're inside yeah, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I love your point. I know your point's pretty on uh, on point when it comes to friendship and building families because you're able to see these people that are pretty just separate and they're isolated and they, and they have their little places in the world, but they want more. They want to contribute and they want to make a difference and the best way you can do that is when you can do it together. And all, and it, yeah, that's basically when it, you wind it down, it comes to that, but hot dang, they did a good job with these movies, huh, gang? It's a good yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just echo these. It's like this has all been about connection. I think the Marvel comics are all about connection, the interconnectivity of these worlds, and the fact that each of these characters are larger than the sum of their parts. Whereas I think if you read DC comics, some other brands of comics, it's about like that rugged individualism and how is this character different in his or her point of view. Uh, in Marvel, it's like they're all friends, and Spider Man's gonna hang out with Daredevil in this comic, and it's great. It's better because they're friends now. So the fact that the end of this movie featured Tony Stark, really the hero of this overall franchise, bringing the entire family back together so that they can all be friends in a giant scene together. It, it felt like the paying off that connection and that once you do that, if you can bring people together, that's you can let go. I mean, point. it's analogistic, really. Like it's the Infinity Stones all coming together from various corners of the universe into one thing, just like how all of these different characters came together to form the MCU. 
right? It's exactly what it is. Like each of these different stones represented a different aspect of the Marvel universe, magic, Space wizardry, regular <laughs> wizardry, space, like just like all the different things, just like dudes in the military, like all this different stuff all came together. And that's exactly what the MCU was. It really is. Like it, it tied it all together. Yeah. It's interesting that you say was, right? Because it, it kind of feels like that. It does. I, I just, where do you go from here? Like what, like, you know, I, I, I love that it's like, hey, Tony, we're going to be okay. You're like, yeah, right. There never is going to be another threat on the earth. You're right. You can totally <laughs> die. We're good well, forever. Yeah, but if any family on Earth is like probably okay, it's that family. That's fair. This like billionaire family with nanotech, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and happy, yeah. happy bringing and the happy. burgers. Bring the burgers, uh, stacks of burgers. But where it's going actually is actually where I want to go next. Uh, let's talk. I mean, we we this is our our bread and butter here. Let's talk theories, right? Uh, so where is this all headed? So first one I want to talk about, kind of a big deal, Captain America hands his shield to Sam, not Bucky, uh, who a lot of people have been expecting that, and you, uh, if you read the comics, you kind of like, we're like, yeah, you know, I'll probably go to, Bu to Bucky. There's times where it's gone to Sam. Uh, but, so my question is, are do you guys think that we're about to see a bunch of movies, Captain America movies, starring old man Captain America? Oh, I, I hope so. Wish. No, I'm kidding, no, wait, no, 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 I mean Sam, 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 Sam. Why not both, huh? Just yeah. doing a Clint Eastwood yeah. style? Just Clint Eastwood yeah, and Sam. Just, yeah. Yeah. just <laughs> mowing his lawn, throwing shields. The old man Cap piece. is Fredrickson from Up, that old <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna die, yeah. he's gonna float away in a balloon uh, house. Him and uh, Ned. Yeah, Mr. Fredrickson, No. Is, is Sam about to be our new Captain America in movies? I, yes, I like Sam being Captain America. I like Sam too. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. No, but also, doesn't it kind of make more sense instead of Bucky? Bucky's been a world terrorist like four times, <laughs> and, like, and his face has been plastered all over. Like we gotta find this guy. Like they they yeah. recruited like teachers to find him. Like they were like they wanted everyone to look for him. And like he ju he just got out of therapy, and then he died, and now he's back. It's been like hours since he got out of therapy and got the mm. AOK. Barely, <laughs> and yeah. like so, it's like maybe he shouldn't represent what America is. I don't know. He sounds exactly like. Yeah, he does sound pretty on like, par. I, <laughs> I mean, I was I was okay with it. I really love the idea of Bucky getting it, but I also uh, in the comics and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure the reason why Sam plays Cap is because they established that his dad was actually in the Super Soldier program, so he has right. a little bit of the Super Soldier blood in is him, that oh. which makes sense because it's like otherwise Sam's just a dude with a really cool backpack. Like that's cool. He's got a backpack mm -hmm. and he can throw a shield. Like that's not gonna stop a bullet. <laughs> like it's fine. I would love, and I hope this is what they do. Is the the Bucky and, and Falcon show? It's just the two of them having a power struggle. It's like I should yes. be Cap. No, I should be Cap. And them just having a really good duo banter. I'd love that. I'm I want to see an episode it. of their new series where they both get handcuffed to the shield <laughs> and they, they get used. <laughs> Draw a mind down the center of the compound. Yeah, the you can't people. cross over. Yeah. yeah, I want it, I want that to be a football between them. Mm -hmm. And then each episode they got to trade it off right. to see who's more worthy to right. carry Cap's legacy. Oh, and then at the end you real spoilers, I guess, but you realize that they represent both sides of Cap. Oh. And it would be kind of cool if Steve became like an Oracle type character, mm. like Barbara Gordon in like DC Comics, <laughs> where she was like behind the scenes. Uh -huh. And so he's trying to figure out how to use a MacBook and like an iPad. He's like, okay. <laughs> I've got viruses everywhere. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Stop downloading toolbars. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, uh, we got another question from the audience, Tommy. Uh, Tommy, where are you? Hey guys, thanks. We're back at the beautiful El Capitan Theater. <laughs> Man, you're, Sam, you're ten feet away from us. I'm uh, here with my good friend, Jamie. Jamie, Jamie. Lannister. Uh, property. Oh, that's t that's Sunday. And, uh, uh, it could be a bad weekend for Starks. What's your week? Uh, what's your question? Uh, assuming that we're moving forward from the events of the end of the movie in Spider-Man: Homecoming. Uh, how does Peter deal? Or Spider-Man Far From Home? Yeah, Far From Home, sorry. Yeah. So the question is, uh, what's gonna happen with Peter and Spider-Man Far From Home? Also kind of part of our question of, yeah. and when is all that happening? Right. Right? I, think five, I think now, the now now. Right, it makes sense that it's a now. Now he's so back. So be before, because we just said it was five years in the future. So five years mean, in the future, af post everybody being back. Not our now. Now they are now. They are now. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's I think, impossible for us to just use year numbers. No, we can use year no, numbers. No, the now. Now and the no. Now. Now. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the now. Now. Twenty twenty four. Like what year is it now? So remember, it's five years from Infinity War because it was only twenty two days later. It's, something yeah, before it skipped Twenty eighteen and Infinity War. Right. So twenty twenty three. Yeah, is it 2018? Three. Because I thought the math was, and this is getting real bad. I thought the math it's was bad. It's on brand for us to figure this out. <laughs> okay, I think it's I, because when he was ha Tony was having his monologue on the ship after they killed the Maw, I thought he said a number. He said like X amount of years since 
the attack in New York, which would have made it 2019. Ooh. He said six years from 2012. And 2012 is when I was six? Okay. Well, well, then, uh, Jamie, did we answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we, we didn't even we didn't even address it. Every, yeah. every uh, Spider-Man movie is eight years later. I think. Yeah. <laughs> what is it about the Spider-Man movies that always uh, mess it up? Sony is well, what's about I, the Spider-Man movies. To like go on that, like you yeah. see in the trailer, uh, Aunt Man and with Spider-Man do, doing like a charity auction where like they're giving away money or Happy's just selling off Tony's old stuff, like his cars and whatnot, for money to help communities. And so like I feel like there's an aspect of like like maybe she got dusted as well. I think that's some some article was like, oh yeah, she got dusted as well. So they come back and they try to do the, what they can to help out their community, especially with what Peter can do and what he represents, and trying to kind of embody what Tony was able to do for communities around the world. Um, so I think that's where it's going to be. It's kind of like, and maybe he takes a break over summer because everyone's going to have to have a vacation occasionally. But he's needed everywhere. He's got to go help out in Europe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then airline tickets are super cheap because no one wants to be on a flight in case another dust happens. Yeah, oh, yeah. Planes imagine the number of planes. Yeah, Do you guys think yeah. MJ got dusted? Mm, I'd like to think uh, that probably. she didn't because then he comes back as a 16 year old and she's like 22 exactly. and he's like dating <laughs> that older girl. Is yeah. That a, yeah. Yeah. I think it's fine. I mean, I think that everyone, it makes sense that everybody in his core group got dusted. I think that makes so perfect that they sense. Come back so they the all age. come back and it all works out, yeah. and they're like, we're, mm -hmm. we're all still 13 years old or 15 years old. <laughs> yeah. I think, here's my guess. I think, remember, he said he for him it was like five minutes had passed, mm -hmm. uh, and he was just like, Dr. Strange said uh, five years passed and we need to fight, which I think is amazing, and, and uh, so on brand for that character being constantly confused. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think he's going to be exactly the Spider-Man we know and love. I think they'll just have Ned constantly like break down in tears over <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so much. He's like, all right, it's cool. You know, we weren't that tight. Uh, but okay, so here's a question. Um, the sound at the end, we touched on it for a second, and Matt already kind of alluded to this. And I, it's, it's, it's my theory, so there wasn't a post credit scene in this movie. Uh, uh, no, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, except for, you know, all the Marvel movies have post credit scenes, and this one doesn't. So we hear at the end the sound that we're all saying, oh yeah, it's the sound of Iron Man making his first suit in the 2008 Iron Man film, uh, or is it? Is it the sound of potentially the next Iron Man suit already being made? What do you guys think? If they decide to use blunt instruments to do it, maybe. I mean, he had to use a hammer because that's all he had with the box of scraps, you know? Like, you know, <laughs> conceivably, now young Morgan Stark or, or Pepper Potts or whoever the next legacy is, Shuri, has more nanotech technology that they can use to build a new Iron Man suit. If, if they're from the Starks. Right, but it could be someone just out in the middle of nowhere, or like a Riri Williams, a Williams, Williams if you wanted Williams, to. Yeah. Yeah. I Maybe. like the idea of it just kind of being a note of like this is the sound of the first like wonder kind of kicking off this whole universe. But besides Cap in the forties, and b besides Thor being and, thousands of years ago, doesn't matter. Hulk, Hulk yeah. before that too. Yeah. There's a yeah. it's, it's a little you know wonky, but no, I like that idea of that sound kind of being the end, but also marking the future. I feel like I like the idea of someone backyard building an Iron Man like suit. Don't kill yourself like we saw all those people like do. I, I, I like that idea when it comes to like like a like a younger genius type character. Like mm -hmm. they want to embody what Tony represented to them. And the sacrifice he made for them. Yeah. Do you guys want another Iron Man? Nah. I, I there were so many characters. Do, sorry, yeah. do you guys want another Iron Man? <laughs> no. Wow. Now, is there anybody that does? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Wait. No, it's Tommy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he just likes saying, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no matter what. I have a picture of Kool-Aid. Yeah. Uh, Kool uh, just a picture of Kool-Aid? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about uh, moving forward in the MCU and, and phase four. Uh, Tommy, did you uh, did you get somebody else out there? Yeah, we had someone here, but unfortunately they were in league with Thanos, so when the snap happened, they dusted. But I do have their question Chitar, archived. we welcome to Okay, so, so to Tommy, you're allowed to just ask us a question if this is your question. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Uh, my question is, uh, what's next for those crazy kids in the Avengers? Who's what's, what, what villain do we have to fear next? Uh, yeah. What's going to be the next obstacle? Maybe it's not a villain. I don't know. You tell me. It sounds like you have an answer that you're trying to get to. I don't. You wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> is it Batman again, Tommy? We've talked oh, about yeah! that. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, Yes, uh, but I'd like to hear from you guys. Who's who's next? Who's the next obstacle? Thanos is gone. Uh, Kang. I mean, you set up the time travel exit. <sighs> can, can you explain who Kang is? Yeah, people? Kang is your, your classic time travel villain. He basically, instead of a time heist being a part of the Avengers, like, we gotta do this to save the universe, he does time heists just to take things he wants and any, or even kidnap the people he wants to affect his own future and become mm -hmm. king of whatever he wants to yeah, be. He can he do whatever. Kill time. There you go, exactly. <laughs> like, and so there's, uh, you can get a really long story out of that, like, seriously, like, where you can kind of get stories 
that were like in ancient times or in the future, or you have characters bouncing around or new teams popping up to kind of face different versions of him because that happens a lot in comics. Yeah. You get business suit variant, you get young him who's actually like an Iron Man variant as Iron Lad, you get older version of him mm -hmm. where he's all purple. There's a lot of versions and hey, they like their purple vil villains, so yeah. wouldn't mind having another one. I um I think so I ended got the, the I was fortunate enough to interview Kevin Feige like right after he got promoted after he was uh, Aviarad's assistant for like 15 years wow. right after they did Hulk and we were talking and we were just just gushing about comic books because back then it was a weird thing to do as opposed to it is now and he was saying the one thing he wishes he would be able to do period is Secret Invasion he would yeah. love to be able to do Secret Invasion which is why I was kind of let down with Captain Marvel because they kind of just like made the scrolls kind of weak. They were just kind of these like refugees. They weren't these like badass alien race that, that I know them as. But I feel like that would be a really cool way to do that. You can definitely kind of swap out characters and it's basically invasion of the body snatchers. Scrolls came in, they could change their faces and they just started like plucking up heroes and just changing them and, and turning it into like a secret war essentially. Not the secret war, but a secret war. And I think that would be rad. Like you do that over the next 10 movies and it's like you don't know who's who, you have no idea, it's back to like it's it's basically clue, right? Like you're trying to figure out every character you see. You're like, wait, is this a scroll or is that new cap or what is going on here? How's that going to work? Oh, there's a scroll out there. We're, we're gonna find. <laughs> we gotta, it's scroll search. We're gonna find that scroll. Uh, just because the scroll we saw in Captain Marvel were nice mm -hmm. and peaceful refugees, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean that there are other, uh, you know, uh, evil scrolls out there. True. Various motive scrolls. I I have a fan theory that I think there is a scroll somewhere in the MCU. It's so easy just to put him in there this whole time. All the time there is a character who's a scroll. Um, I, I would love to see Secret Invasion. I agree with you, Matt. That would probably be my number one pick. But I think like. Really, the direction they're gonna go is Galactus, Silver Surfer, right? I mean, they just reacquired that. I wouldn't be surprised at the end of Far From Home. I thought we would see it in the post credit scene for this movie. I think after Far From Home, we're gonna see some kind of hint toward Galactus, Silver Surfer, maybe Doctor Doom, because I think they're most eager to bring in the Fantastic Four as part of their new properties. God, I hope so. Cool. Do you have an idea? Yeah. Okay. So if you watch the video back, my eyes start exploding when you start talking, and I was like. Secret Wars, but the more recent one where it became, it's a story of you, of different realities kind of starting to die or different universes, and they all get pieced together into one world called Battle World. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you could do it based on what they based in, what happened in this movie with the divergent timelines, where like, mm -hmm. basically we start, what if they start making movies? Where you get these like side stories of like, oh, these are new heroes popping up, but then you start realizing, that, oh, they're not happening. In you know a universe where the rest of our stories are happening at the same time, so all of a sudden they start getting pieced together by a villain like Doctor Doom, or you get like the Beyond, or you don't, or like Molecule Man. You make yeah. them look cool. You make them look better than they normally looks in the comics, and you kind of basically start pitting all of these heroes and different variant versions of our characters against each other, Cap versus Cap, like in this movie, but on a grander scale, as big as the final battle in this movie. Mm -hmm. I would lose it, and also the Rousseaus have said if we were to come back, that's the movie we want to make is Secret Wars. And I like, like how you say Rousseau. Yeah, the Rousseau. <laughs> Uh, I feel like you guys covered covered what will probably happen, but one thing I want to kind of point out for everyone, I feel like it, I don't know, it just stood out to me when I was watching the movie, uh, so maybe you guys kind of noticed it too. When Rocket is talking about what uh, the gauntlet, what the snap did uh, in, in the moment on Earth, he says that uh, there was a cosmic event essentially on Earth that released this unimaginable amount of energy, and I was like, well, there are your mutants. Right? Oh, mm -hmm. That's how you make make mutants. So, are the X Men about to happen? I hope not. We, we need some really? time. Yeah. 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 We, we need time. I think we kind of fit like off screen. We were kind of talking about Fantastic Four being a more exciting prospect, bef like before we got X Men. Like, it, like the idea of you wanting someone maybe that uh, like is an intelligent uh, person or a scientist that could kind of step in for like Tony Stark would be kind of interesting. So you get your Reed Richards. You want your hot head. You want your big misunderstood guy. You got yeah. your new Hulk. You got the thing, and you get Sue Storm. You need to round out the the, the Marvel Illuminati, right? And mm -hmm. it's like Professor X is cool and all, but the problem is with X Men, it's so heavy. You can't introduce X Men without introducing the fact that they are based around a metaphor for racism in the 60s. Like, that is a heavy topic to play with in a Marvel movie. Like, Fantastic Four could just be this plucky family that is just like, we like going on adventures, and this guy's made of rocks. Like, that's, <laughs> that's what we want, right? Like, that's what we need. We need to have another super genius, like a Reed Richards. You need to have that family dynamic. We don't have it right now, and it, it, there is a, group or a franchise that screams Disney, it is the Fantastic yeah. Four. A million percent, it's so good, like we need it. 
I, 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 we do need it. I, I, we just haven't had like a really solid adaptation of the Fantastic Four on screen. You know, screen. like the Josh Trank one. What? <laughs> what? Oh, Fan on. four yeah. stick. Yeah. Yeah. Fan four <laughs> stick. Yeah, it's we need. Uh, we need to show people who aren't comic readers that the Fantastic Four are actually really cool, interesting characters. Mm -hmm. Whereas people already kind of know X Men. People are like excited. They liked the Hugh Jackman depiction. There was a lot of those movies that worked really well, and people already kind of trust it. So they'll come back around to it in Phase Five mm -hmm. when Feige comes back to it, we need to like show to the world, we need to reintroduce Fantastic Four to yes. the world. And, and also it's like, what if Disney pitched like, oh it's live action Incredibles, and then there you go, like that's exactly what, what, what they want from Easy. that, so yep. yeah, super on board. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so fine, no X-Men, <laughs> they're out. Uh, uh, way all the cars. Cars. Okay, yeah. how about Namor? Namor? And, and here's, here's why I asked that, and not because I'm, I'm pitching it, did, did you guys, and same thing for you guys, did it ring weird for any of you when they started talking about an earthquake under the sea? Yeah, yeah they're talking about tsunamis. Like, I am so wait. deaf to that stuff now. Like, really? I, Just because they keep doing those things, like, yeah, this thing happened. They've been doing it in movies, for in comic book movies, since the beginning of comic book movies. Yeah. Almost like a nod. Do you think that actually... In was... this movie, though, where they they had, like, there were moments in this movie where I could tell they edited out someone, like, walking, like, they just got over there really fast, <laughs> because it was such, it had to be such a tight movie, yeah. to give a line about uh, Wakandans put, ignoring an earthquake under the sea, and it's potentially setting up for this battle between Wakanda and Atlantis, in, in my opinion. Uh, or do you guys think it was just fan service? I thought it was uh, uh, adapted from the Infinity Gauntlet comics where wasn't there there was a huge tsunami that like mm -hmm. threatened the eastern seaboard. I thought it was a reference to that like after the snap happens there's more like natural disasters that continue to happen on earth. I read it as that. But now that you mention it it's like yeah, of course there are no accidents in, in Marvel movies. Everything costs a if billion Wakanda's dollars. If Wakanda's on a map, Wakanda's going to be in a movie 6 right. years later. Yeah. If Doctor Stephen Strange gets mentioned uh, as a list of interested right. people, he's going to show up later. They, in a Movie. They did have Wakanda on that map in yeah. Age of Ultron. Yeah, they or, did. Uh, they did. Yeah. I, I just feel like in a world where you already have an Aquaman, you're gonna have twelve more Aquamans and like three more movies about like that one scene in Aquaman. Like, do we really need a Namor? Like, it's such a a parallel to Aquaman. Like, I feel like Marvel and Disney are smart enough to be like, this is the same territory. We don't need to do this character. Mm. Like, there's so many other characters you can do that they're not being touched by any other franchise. It's weird, because, like, Namor could be a brain... Like, you could get to Namor through Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. and since he's a mutant, you could kind of connect him to X-Men. Mm -hmm. Like, you, there's something there, but he's so convoluted. Like, you, they do... The Russos and the other directors do such a good job at kind of distilling characters down to what works just for what they want to say, like, what their story is. But it's... Is such a confusing character, and he if he's on screen, he has to be in his underwear, because that's what he wears yep. in every battle ever. He's flying around, pointy ears and all, eyebrows up to here. Now the best question is, will Dwayne Johnson get an EP credit, because he was technically as attached to Namor for like 15 years, much like he got an EP credit in Shazam Whoa, for not being in the wow. movie. Oh. That's the real question. Are we gonna was, get, my question is, is Namor going to be fat? Are all the new things going to be fat? fat heroes, guys. Guys. Come on, <laughs> we, need a, we need a new hero. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, before we wrap up, we're getting close to wrapping up here. Uh, I want to talk just uh, for a second here about, well, we'll start with talking about his cameo, and then just uh, uh, what Stanley did here for, oh, yeah. for us. Uh, did, did, you, did your screening notice the cameo? Yeah. Stanley yeah. cameo? Yeah. Man, my first time watching it, up three, uh, is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think I think people thought it was Mark Maron or something. You know, they were just kind of like, oh, hey, the guy from Glow. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed it first time. I didn't notice the bumper sticker until the second time. What did the bumper sticker Enough say? Enough said. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, that's which cool. is cute. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what do you guys think uh, uh, he would have thought about all this? I mean, about the, the way this all wrapped up. I mean, he probably knew, right? Probably. Yeah. Like, and also proud. Like, you ended on the biggest the blockbuster ending you could possibly imagine for a movie. We couldn't even picture what this was. Like, again, I didn't see a Pegasus being in this final yeah. battle, and like, I d yeah. like, I don't know how you would have gone more epic than this. And there's no way he uh, wasn't at least a little bit proud. He yeah. he absolutely was. I mean, Stan was a fan of every single thing that that transpired into becoming a business, right? The fact that it was him and a couple of guys in Midtown Manhattan in the '60s, just doodling and making these dumb characters, and the fact that it's now become this massive franchise and Mysterio is about to have action figures based on an, an Academy-nominated actor, like all this stuff is so insane. I think he would have been insanely proud. He was just a huge, huge, huge fan of the success of of comic book movies. Yeah, I saw a connection when. It with the death of Tony Stark in that scene, you know, like, it's okay, we're gonna be okay, you brought us all together, 
and that was a huge victory and accomplishment so you can let go. And I, I kind of felt a connection with Stanley, the fact that he was able to bring all this together, create this world and this idea of like interconnectivity of people who are so different being able to find like a common agenda. I, I definitely felt like some reverberations thematically. Uh, uh, before we, we go on too much, uh, uh, we just want to play a video that we made uh, about Stan. So if we can go ahead and uh, just go and roll that video, Devin. the greatest stories ever told. Heroes show us we don't need to be perfect to do what's right. Did it work? It's not about living without fear, but facing injustice. Wakanda forever! It's not about being powerful, but finding your calling when you least expect it. They show us it's okay to be vulnerable no matter how tough you are. They were characters that reflected my own heartbreak. The Hulk, a normal guy one minute, a rage of emotions the next, just like me. Because even though they're heroes, they're still human. It's no fun reading about somebody who's perfect. You want to read about people that you can identify with because we've all got problems. And if you can create and write about a character who is flawed, but manages to overcome those flaws, then I think that's pretty good. My motto is Excelsior. That's an old word that means upward and onward to greater glory. Keep moving forward. And if it's time to go, it's time. Nothing lasts forever. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. Excelsior! Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. You guys were awesome, but these guys were awesome. Give it up for Matt Robb. Sam Bantor. Boss, uh, Philip Molina, thank you guys uh, so much. Thank you so much to the El Capitan for hosting yes. us. It's where the diehards go to watch their heroes die hard. Uh, uh, thank you so much to Himalaya Media for helping us put this together. Thank you, Himalaya. Uh, and for helping us launch the Rockstars Plus, which will be more uh, information about that. But from us to you guys, thank you guys so much. You guys are the best for being here for all this. That, that's it for this episode of New Rockstars Live. Uh, we're gonna hang out with everybody who's actually in this room, though, and, uh, and get to mingle and talk nerdy. Uh, thank you to everybody who helped us put this on, though. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.